Today we're going to cover some more advanced features of QLab that you may not have noticed in your initial explorations. There's a little button down here in the lower right corner that lets you mess with queue lists and active queues. If you click on it, you'll see that you have your main queue list, which is what you have right here already in place. But a cool thing is you can add multiple queue lists and then access them from other queue lists as well. It's an easy way to organize stuff and keep things clean. I like to make different queue lists and then use play commands from the main queue list to access the other queue lists. To do add a new one, obviously you click right here and it'll add a list. You can rename it whatever you want. Let's call it light queues. And then in our main queue list, we could have all the files that we normally have, but we could build a light palette here in this queue list. Let's go ahead and throw in a couple MIDI queues, which would uh, trigger some lights for us. And let's call this blue lights, red lights, green. and we'll do a little blackout. So these would be in here and these would be talking to a lighting program for example LX console and you can simply trigger lights by sending a MIDI message to LX console um, using a variety of ways which we'll cover in a separate tutorial. So we have these four light cues in here in this light cue list and the nice thing about this is if you go ahead and edit any of these cues or change them, they'll be changed everywhere that accesses this list. So if you had a huge complicated main queue list with all kinds of light cues in it and you made a change to the blue, for example, uh, all of that information would change in every reference to it. So it makes it an easy way to kind of update stuff without having to be trapped by going through each individual queue in a, in a very complicated queue list. So to do that you're just going to add a play button and so we're going to say play and then we just click on this little triangle here and you can drag items from queue list the one queue list into the other and we just link that to to this here. So when I hit this it will start the blue light queue. Um, again and just keep adding all the cues you want here, all the play commands and just drag and drop these links in to link them to to those lists. Another thing you can do, which is nice, is you can disable and enable different queue lists, different queues for that matter, to make it a lot easier to force things to be on and off, so you can set up different types of shows and then turn on and turn off those things. Uh, the easy way to do that is you click on the queue list you have, or the queue, for example, and you just go to basic settings and you are unarm it in this case and you'll see that it puts a stripe on it. The queue will still progress in the timeline, but it just won't do whatever is within that queue, um, which makes it... You can also obviously take out an entire queue list. You can also do this by accessing the disarm and arm queues as well. Let's go ahead and add a disarm queue to this list and then we'll drag and drop the light queue list onto that to tell it when this fires it'll disable this light queue list here. So if we go ahead and we run through this, this will fire the blue lights, the red lights will come on, the green lights will come on, a blackout, and now this will disarm the light cues here. So firing all of these now will do nothing. This is all disabled so they will not play. Again, lots of options available once you start playing with all this stuff and realize what you can and can't turn on. For example, what I do is I have a certain remote button and I have certain areas of that remote that I want to access at different times. One single button. So what I do is I make multiple cues for that. Uh, for example, I use MIDI cues normally. So we'll just fire these different ones. Let's say this one turns on fog, this one turns on some house lights, and this one uh, enables a laser to come on. 
And I don't want them all to come on at the same time. So, for example, if I'm, I'll, what I'll actually do is I'll disable all of them initially, just individually, because I'm going to be accessing them individually as well. So they're all, all disarmed. And in my main queue list, I would have a routine, say we come to it, and we'll call it, we'll add a new group just to make this clear. We'll call it lasers. And when we enter into the laser group, we're going to tell it to turn on the laser queue. So we'll tell it to turn this one on. And we'll do the, do the routine. We'll just add a little note queue in here, just pretend that's the routine there. So what will happen is, and then when it's finished, we'll have the routine play, whatever it's doing. We'll just give it a three second time. And then we'll go ahead and disarm that when that's finished by adding a disarm queue. So when I click that remote button, it disarms the, the laser button so that when I do click it, it's ready to fire. It does its thing, and then when it's done, it disables it again so that it's disabled and that can't be accidentally clicked another time. So again, if we fire this thing here, we enter into the group. I have to move these into the group, actually, they're not quite in there. So you'll see it disarm the laser queue, does its thing, when it's finished, it turns it back off again. And then you could turn on and off the fog, the house, the lasers as needed, making that single remote button have multi-functions depending on what routine you're in at the time. Lots to think about. All right, go get them.